Were you here then? I don't know if you were or not. On passenger ships, or cruise ships they call them, have you ever been on one or read any itinerary about them, what do they do? <coughs> they play ping pong. They sit around all day and drink tea. They do. They eat five meals a day feeding their flesh. Yeah, they have five meals a day. Do you know that you can get five meals a day running around to meetings and getting fat on the Word and not doing nothing with it? Do you understand? God wants to use us. He doesn't want us to continually pull it up to the table and pull it up to the table and pull it up to the table and not give out. A, a, a passenger ship, uh, they cruise the same routes. Always in a circle. Always in a circle. And they stop at every port. And they never get nowhere. Do they? But you see, a warship are always on alert. They watch and they pray. They watch. They have guards posted at the watch. They keep uh, physically fit. They don't feed their flesh. Why? Because it slows them down in battle. They steer directly towards the enemy. They n- never stopping. They st- search and destroy. Who? The enemy. They stay spiritually fit. Warships bring freedom. They bring freedom. And we must have freedom in the spirit realm to set the captives free. God has told us how to do it. God has told us how. And we're beginning. We have already began. We began on the last couple of Monday nights. But we're going to step it up. We're going to speed it up. But God can't have His army sitting somewhere else in another meeting. You understand that? He wants to use each and every one of us. You know? My dear people, if you've ever helped pioneer a new church, because I have, if you've ever helped pioneer a new church, if you've ever had a different, difficult role in leadership, if you've ever stood with a cancer patient who was dying, or if you've ever been taken advantage of, or if you've ever had to deal with something unpleasant, or been deceived, rejected, and left alone, you have been in a combat zone. You've been in a combat zone. And that's what I'm talking about this evening. We're, 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 we live in a war. There's a war waging around us. And I don't, you know, you know, you know, a few weeks ago I gave a message about Jesus weeping wept over the city he wept over the city and my people my dear people I weep over the city every time I walk through the town I physically cry the people are the walking dead the walking dead and I'm sorry but they're the walking dead I have never seen such bondage in my entire life they're not free the only opportunity they have of ever being free is for God to use us to get off the passenger ship to get off the passenger ship and get onto that warship I don't care where you where you put your ship <laughs> please understand I don't God's going to move he's already started to move but let's get on with the program <coughs> You know, there's no more exciting place than the front lines of battle. We have a good time. We have a good time. We are in a spiritual war. And it's an exciting place. I love it. I love it. But my dear people, it requires that we possess fierce determination. Fierce determination. And understand the strategy of the enemy. Do you think God... I'm going to tell you, God sent Carol and I here He sent us here. He didn't send us here to have another meeting, to add to the other meetings. He sent us here to take back this town. And he says, I'm going to raise up this holy remnant. You see? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Turn with me, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 26. (coughs) 
I guess what it is, my dear people, and I love each and every one of you, but there's people that's got that, in this very room it has got big calls on their life. Big calls. And all they got to do is begin to walk in it. Begin to walk in it. Don't let the enemy blind you anymore. Just begin to walk in it. And he'll use you. He wants to use us. <laughs> Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, beginning in verse 33. This is where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was talking to Peter. We all know Simon Peter, don't we? Peter's the guy that's always got his foot in his mouth. Verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter said unto him, Thou, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise all said all the disciples. Verse 36. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. So there's three disciples right there. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Who did? Jesus. Jesus became, began to become very sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. In other words, Jesus was coming under attack by the enemy. He was coming under attack by the enemy. He said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And he's saying, Tarry ye here and watch with me. He's saying, Tarry ye here and watch with me. And, they, and then he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see, Jesus, even the flesh come against Jesus, but he overcame every time. Why? Because God will not give us any temptation that we cannot overcome as a Christian. He was our perfect example. In verse 40, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he findeth, let's see, and he findeth them asleep and he said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? In other words, can you not pray and watch with me one hour? Now that was the first time he came back. That was the first time. Verse 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The old flesh is weak, is it not? See? But the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time. Jesus went away the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy the second time. The second time. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. In the Garden of Gethsemane, our Lord Jesus Christ was coming under attack. He was coming under attack and he said to his disciples, now who's his disciples? Amen. We are. Do you think that Jesus, do you think that his body is not under attack today? Do you think that his church is not under attack today? And he's coming to his disciples and he says, what can't you tarry and watch with me one hour? Can you not tarry and watch with me one hour? In other words, uh, 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 what uh, could you not watch with me one hour? Can you not tarry with me one hour? Watch for what? Watch for the enemy? Tarry with me? Pray? Can you not pray and watch with me one hour? Because you see, he found his disciples asleep three times. Every time he came back, all three times. You know where they were at? They were on the passenger ship. They were on the passenger ship. In his great hour of trial, Jesus' disciples could not tarry with him one hour in prayer. 
They could not watch for one hour. Watch for the enemy. Jesus was under attack. His body was under attack, just like His church is under attack today by the enemy, right now. And so, we see the church today, and Jesus is praying, and the disciples are asleep. The disciples are asleep. And Jesus is saying, can you not tarry and watch with me one hour? One hour is not that much, is it? He said, can you not tarry with me one hour? But my dear people, if, we're, if we don't have enough time in the day because of things that we're doing, we don't have time to pray. You should understand, we've got our priorities out of order. So, but God has given us all the strategy for this end time move of God to bring in His harvest, to bring in the lost, to bring in the unsaved. And this is what He wants us to do. That's the reason why, and I'm about to finish here, in Romans uh, 13, the Word of God says, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 12, the Word of God says, And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed, than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. The Lord is saying it to us this evening. He's saying to wake up, to wake up out of our sleep, to cast off the works of darkness, to put on the armor of light. My dear people, we are in a war, and there's lives at stake. Lives at stake. I have four questions I feel that we must ask ourselves. First of all, who and what are we living for? Second, are our, are our priorities in life God's priorities? Thirdly, is Jesus Christ Lord in every aspect of my life? Fourth, if Jesus came tonight... And he could very well. Would he find me working in the harvest? Would he find me about his father's business? <laughs> you know, Jesus himself said, when the fig tree buds, look up. What does that mean? When Israel is restored, look up. You know, when Jesus was talking to his disciples in Matthew's Gospel 24, there was no nation of Israel on the earth. In 608 B.C., with the Babylonian captivity, Israel ceased as a nation. Then it went through a Persian captivity, a Grecian captivity, and Roman captivity. Israel finally became a nation May the 14th, 1948. And of course, there's many, 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 many prophecies in the Bible concerning Israel, the fulfillment of the end-time prophecies, of which most of them are already fulfilled. Did you realize that? Over 2,000 prophecies have been fulfilled. It talks about the generation that witnesses the restoration of Israel will be the generation that ushers in the second coming of Jesus Christ. That generation. Israel became a nation May 14, 1948. A generation in the Bible is 40 years. 40 years. So quite frankly, we're past due. We're past due. <clears throat> My dear people, we are the most important generation that has ever lived in the history of church, of the church age, of the New Testament church. They are having revival all over the world by the hundreds of thousands. England and Europe is one of the last frontiers. It's one of the last frontiers. And the Lord is saying to us this evening, the harvest is already there. It's already there. But yes, there are spiritual um, principles, if you like, that He's given us 
that we must do to bring in the harvest. He's put the ball in our court. No, that's not easy. It wasn't easy for the New Testament Christians either. The first Christians, the very first one. How'd you like to be alive then? You walk out the door and somebody grab you and feed you to a lion. Hmm? Just for your faith. You see? So we're blessed and don't even know it. You see? So, we are the most important generation that has ever lived in the history of the church age. And we are the eye living, the living eyewitnesses of the restoration of Israel. And He is coming soon. And He's saying to us, watch and pray. Can you not tarry one hour? Can you not tarry one hour? Can you not watch and pray one hour? He's asking for an hour a day is what He's asking. Watch and pray. This is what we've been talking about, isn't it? It's what we've been teaching for the last... So He wants to use each and every one of us if we will allow Him. Amen? If we will allow Him. Well, praise God. (coughs) (coughs) Praise You, Lord. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Father. Hallelujah. Please take everything that was said this evening with with, with text. Just with... uh, I felt love of the sport, the spirit, to say what the Holy Spirit led me to say, and I got to be obedient. You know that. If I wasn't obedient, I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. He's asking us to, 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 to pray, to tarry, to watch and pray. Because his church is under attack. His body is under attack. To bring in this harvest. Amen.